Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Here with, well, you know, there's some recordings that just restore your faith in humanity. And this is one of them. It's an extraordinary performance of the Eroica, Beethoven's Third Symphony with the Budapest Festival Orchestra under Ivan Fischer um, on Channel Classics. Um, it's an SACD. The sonics are amazing. The playing is extraordinary. You know, wh why is this great? Well, first of all, it shows us that there are still wonderful ideas and approaches to bring to the classics, which are idiomatic and musical and intelligent and, and which work um, and which you probably haven't heard before. So that's, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that it reaffirms my belief that you really cannot equal the, the sheer sonic and technical uh, splendor of a great orchestra under the baton of a conductor who's been with them from the start for decades and who has forged them into a remarkable ensemble. And that is certainly true of the Budapest, the Budapest Festival Orchestra under Ivan Fischer. Uh, Yvonne Fisher, whatever you want to call him. It, it's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now, how to describe this Eroica in a universe of Eroica is Eroica liciousness? I mean, there's a zillion Eroicas. Well, this is a noble, really heroic Eroica. I mean, people don't really think about you know, they say, ah, the heroic, you know. And when they say heroic, what they really are thinking about is Napoleon and the French Revolution. And everyone talks about how revolutionary the symphony is. And it's like just revolutionary and it's being revolutionized and it's amazing and it's revolutionosity. And, and what does that mean? How do you do that? How do you convey that? Especially today when it doesn't sound so revolutionary anymore. I mean, you know, in terms of orchestral technique and sonority and all that stuff, I mean, you know, everything that came later was bigger and, and, and sort of more confidently orchestrated and had less issues, um, you know, and, and it, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. The historically informed performance people do it usually by roughing it up. I mean, that's the word. You rough it up, you know, you... you you let the timpani bang and the trumpets blare and the strings are real scrappy and everybody sounds like they're struggling and you emphasize the revolutionary aspect. But what is the heroic aspect? I mean, the heroic aspect has a certain confidence, doesn't it? I mean, you know, it has this sort of, it's like, it's like Superman, you know, he can like stop a train with like one hand or or, you know, walk out of a building that just blew up and never have any of his hair must, you know? I mean, his outfit always looks clean and tidy and he's just sitting there, like, you know, that, 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 there's that as aspect of heroism too, the, the superhero kind of heroism. And that's what you hear in this performance, I think, because the play is absolutely stunning, beautiful in its, in its unanimity and 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 sense of balance. And Fisher has wonderful ideas about phrasing and accent. You know, he, he, he doesn't ignore, he doesn't smooth over. Let's put it that way. It's not, you know, heroism at the expense of the revolutionary element. But on the other hand, all of the accentuation and, and the careful approach to rhythm um, is designed to keep the music moving forward. But it doesn't, it doesn't, stick out. It doesn't poke at you the way a lot of the period instrument performances do. Not that there's anything wrong with those. Don't get me wrong. This is not Hurwitz hates the authentic, authenticity movement BS that I get from so many people. I don't hate it. I hate bad performances. And so many of those performances are done by pickup ensembles that don't have anything like the, the collective virtuosity of this orchestra, for example. And this is what I like to hear. Frankly, I have a preference. I have a preference for great orchestras under really great conductors um, rather than little tiny pint-sized ensembles that got together over a weekend and just said, oh, let's do the Eroica. I mean, there's a difference, right? There really is a difference. So you, you've got a first movement that moves it moves pretty swiftly actually and you hear right away immediately when the violins come in you know with their you know syncopated rhythm an unusually clear 
approach to the rhythm of the piece, which is really important because as I pointed out before, um, it's in three, four, it's basically waltz tempo, but Beethoven does everything he can so that it doesn't sound like just a trivial kind of waltz, which means there's lots of syncopation, there's lots of entries and accents on, on not the first beat of the bar. And you get that, I mean, Fisher gets it completely. He does not, however, in the development section, it was that where there's that big, you know, what I call the 50 car pile up on the New Jersey Turnpike, you know, there's that big dissonant climax. He doesn't play it for like all of its expressionist, gut-wrenching horror. He doesn't. I mean, it's all part of an overarching movement, you might want to call it. In the coda of the first movement, he does not fix the trumpet parts, which I pisses me off, I have to say, but it not I'm not taking anything away from the performance because what he does is actually kind of kind of interesting. Most people do the trumpet do 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 like this. And then and then you know you just hear the woodwinds in the back sort of feebly going like this. Fisher doesn't even bother with it. He makes it sound as if Beethoven only intended that you hear that first statement of the tune and the rest is just sort of a you know, the joyful hubbub. It actually works really well. The funeral march is 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 beautifully stoic. It's really, I mean, talking about heroic. I mean, that's where it really comes in. You know, the first trio with those big climaxes, they're so full and so they're, they're proud. I mean, there's something there, you know? There's really something. I say heroic. It's what it sounds like. It's amazing. And the fugue is in incredibly transparent and wonderfully linear. It's it's marvelous. Of course, the scherzo never fails, but the finale, the finale is really interesting. Very interesting, in fact, because normally I find this finale to be something of a letdown, particularly the coda, unless George Sell's conducting or Klemper. I mean, there are other people who get through it and manage to make it summarize everything that's come before in a satisfying way. Well, Fisher does too, and he does it in such a unique way. You're going to be shocked, I guarantee it. From the big statement of the tune at the end, bam, bam, dom, bam, you know, that big, big statement of the tune in the full orchestra. And then you've got that twilight episode where everything's going, with the woodwinds and the strings. Well, Fisher makes that much more important than it usually sounds. He 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 accents us. He dun 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 dun. I mean, really, really makes it anticipatory, and and somehow meaningful. It's really cool what he does. You got to hear it because it's all about articulation. It just goes to show what you can do when you have a wonderful ensemble and you really have an idea that makes sense. I mean, that's a good idea. And then the coda comes in and he doesn't, he doesn't whip it up into a fury. In fact, he keeps the tempo almost the same. It's a slow version of the coda. And I got, I got news for you folks. It really, really works. I, it sounds just terrific. Usually, usually it, it's all somehow anticlimactic or quite often. I know a, a lot of you disagree with me about that and that's okay. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. But here, I, I you know, it has a majesty and an emphasis and a weight that somehow really, really provides a beautiful capstone on the entire performance of the entire symphony. It's exceptional and exceptionally interesting. I mean, this is, was, I don't know, is this one of the great heroicas? Well, time will tell. I haven't lived with it long enough. I have to give it you know, a few years to sink in and, you know, see how it all settles. But wow, if you're looking for a great modern Eroica, um, you know, fabulously played and amazingly well recorded. And we had Manfred Hernix, which is also superb, stunning with Pittsburgh on reference recordings. I mean, we're in good shape. I'm just, like I said, we're in good shape with modern performances of this music. Of course, 99.9% .9 of them are going to be dreck. I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> but but greatness is still out there and it's all around us. And here's some evidence for it. Really an amazing and a remarkable achievement. Oh, and you also get the Coriolan Overture in a very gripping performance. Not as fast as like Charles Munch or one of those guys who just goes nuts on it, but 
but dark and trenchant. And it has all the same virtues as the performance of the symphony, and it makes a wonderful filler. So uh, this was a very, very pleasant surprise. Um, and it is an Eroica that lives up to the name. And not a lot of people can say that. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.